Ever since Galileo first turned his telescope to the heavens back in 1609, people have been polishing bits of glass to help them see thousands of miles away. 400 years later, you can now buy a pair of handheld binoculars that can produce an image that's sharper, brighter, and has better resolution than ever before. Making these powerful handheld devices is the result of some revolutionary manufacturing techniques. So, how do they do it? It's a sunny afternoon in Hessen, central Germany. And here in a local nature reserve, Christoph Daumann has come in pursuit of his favorite hobby, twitching, otherwise known as bird watching. Unfortunately, his current binoculars are far from ideal. These old binoculars don't have any sharpness around the edges. They're relatively dark, and you can hardly recognize the writing on the sign. Because of the poor lenses, Christoph can't tell the pigeons from the sparrows. So to help him out, we decided to go in search of the best binoculars we could find. This is Wetzler. Wetzler is home to several manufacturers of lenses and optics, including perhaps the most famous of all, Carl Zeiss. Since 1846, Carl Zeiss has been making lenses for everything from telescopes to cameras to medical equipment. When NASA sent a man to the moon, they used a camera fitted with a Carl Zeiss lens to take the pictures. Producing the perfect lens requires incredibly precise engineering. Every lens begins like this. These raw lenses, or blanks, are coated with talcum powder for easy handling. The first task is to grind and polish them into a shape that will precisely bend light. The more accurate the shape, the sharper the image. The glass is ground by these red grinder heads, which are encrusted with small diamonds. A diamond is the hardest natural substance there is. It gradually cuts away the lens, and after a process of grinding and polishing, it is shaped to a tolerance equivalent to just two thousandths the width of a human hair. But, if you tried making a pair of binoculars with the lenses now, they'd work about as well as the bottom of a milk bottle. That's because every time light hits the surface of a lens, around 5% is reflected instead of transmitted. This reflected light makes the image hazy and hard to see. To reduce these reflections, the lenses are placed in an electron beam vapor chamber and coated with up to seven layers of fluorides of aluminum and magnesium. By controlling the thickness and density of these metal coatings, it's possible to decrease the reflectivity of the surface. But binoculars require more than just a couple of lenses. That's because white light breaks up into primary colors as it passes through the front lens. To correct this dispersion, they use two more lenses in each side to bring the primary colors back together and produce white light again. Even so, it takes more than just top quality lenses to make a really good pair of binoculars. That's because the lenses alone would produce an image that's upside down. In order to turn it the right way up, they also need to fit prisms. These start life as blocks of special high density barium crown glass. And in a process that sounds a lot like an injured whale, grinders slowly cut them to shape. Making the prisms flawlessly smooth requires yet another stage of machining. To prepare them for the ultimate grind, they are attached to a glass block. Incredibly, because the two surfaces are perfectly smooth and completely free of dust, they can be bonded together with just a simple squeeze. They're then ready to go to Zeiss's master grinder. The man in charge of the master grinder is Air Struber, who has been working on Zeiss optics for 17 years. In the 
Working with prisons fascinates me because I have to work on several faces, about four or five, but lenses only have two faces. Inside the master grinder, the combination of more diamond grinders and a white polish called opaline shaped the glass to perfection. The result is a smooth prism with extremely precise angles, known as a roof prism. With the lenses and prisms finally complete, all the parts move on to final assembly in a special dust-free clean room. The challenge now is to ensure all the components are perfectly aligned. No matter how good the optics are, if the binoculars are out of alignment, you'll wind up with a headache. Back at the park, Kristoff is armed with a new set of binoculars. They might have cost a month's worth of wages, but as far as he can see, they're worth it because he can finally tell his herons from his pelicans, resulting in one very happy twitcher.